We do not sacrifice children. The foundation of Satanism is built upon the self. Researchers have made fascinating discoveries that shed light on historical mysteries, unveiling previously unknown stories. From shocking ancient marriage laws to ancient wisdom hidden between pages, we'll take you on a captivating journey through ten mysterious cases of forbidden history. Let's get started. Number 10. Roman Marriage Laws More than 2,000 years ago, the first emperor of Rome faced a challenging problem. The younger generation wasn't getting married or having children, causing the Roman population to age rapidly and decline. To address this issue, the emperor implemented some harsh laws that are often overlooked in history. Interestingly, a similar situation is occurring today in some of the most advanced parts of the world. Countries like Canada, Australia, and New Zealand are relying on immigration to sustain their populations. However, in places with fewer immigrants like Japan, the population is shrinking at an alarming rate. Scientists believe that when societies become advanced and prosperous enough, people have the choice to not have children. This was the case in ancient Rome around 18 BC. To boost the population, Augustus Caesar introduced a law called the Lex Julia de Maritandis Ordinibus. This law compelled Roman men of a certain age to marry and have children. The intention was to encourage native Romans to continue reproducing and maintain the social hierarchy. Those who didn't comply with the law paid huge fines and in some cases lost their Roman citizenship. Additional laws were also enacted, such as only husbands being allowed to dissolve a marriage and a waiting period of at least six months for divorce, during which reconciliation was encouraged. Furthermore, adultery became a criminal offense, and those who engaged in extramarital affairs could even face death, leading to a rise in honor killings. The interesting lesson here is that history often repeats itself. While the actions of ancient Rome are largely forgotten, they serve as a reminder that similar measures could be taken in the future to address declining populations. We never know what kind of unusual laws may be implemented when a society faces a falling population. Number 9. The Tomb of Osiris In ancient Egyptian mythology, Osiris was a powerful god associated with death and the ruler of the underworld. Artists often depicted him as green and with an elongated skull. Interestingly, some people believe that Osiris was not a god, but an alien. According to this belief, Osiris and the other Egyptian gods may have been extraterrestrial conquerors whose true history has been lost to time. In 1999, an Egyptian archaeologist named Zahi Hawass made a remarkable discovery near the Pyramid of Giza. He stumbled upon a mysterious tomb known as the Tomb of Osiris. This tomb was located deep beneath the Egyptian desert, hidden away in a cavern. At its lowest level, Hawass found a massive granite sarcophagus surrounded by a circular moat. However, when archaeologists opened the sarcophagus, they were surprised to find that it was empty. This raises several intriguing questions. Who did the sarcophagus belong to? And where did the body go? Although experts do not have definitive answers to these questions, they believe that the sarcophagus was merely a symbolic representation of Osiris's eternal resting place a demonstration of his kingship over the realm of the dead. In simple terms, they consider it a fake tomb. But what if it wasn't? What if Osiris's tomb belonged to the god of death himself? Perhaps it was a replica created for ceremonial purposes. Number 8. The Freemasons The Freemasons, the oldest known fraternal order in the world, originated during the Middle Ages when skilled builders came together to form a guild. Contrary to popular belief, historians reveal that the Freemasons were not a mystical or secretive cult, but rather a union of skilled workers. They did have secret passwords and rituals, but their primary focus was on craftsmanship and camaraderie. The original guild of Freemasons followed a three-stage progression. Individuals would start as apprentices, then become fellow craftsmen, and finally achieve the esteemed rank of Master Mason. These master masons were highly skilled in various aspects of construction and were responsible for overseeing work sites during the Middle Ages. So, why do we see Freemason imagery everywhere? The Eye of Providence, a symbol used by the Freemasons for centuries, represents omnipotence. 
The most famous symbol of the Freemasons is the square and compass, with a prominent letter G in the center. While the meaning of the G remains unknown, it has been speculated to represent geometry or God as the greatest architect. Another widely recognized symbol is the beehive, which symbolizes the industriousness and diligence of Freemasons. Despite not being a religion, Freemasonry was deemed heretical by the Church in the 19th century. The Vatican labeled all Freemasons as part of the Synagogue of Satan. Since 1738, the Church has viewed the so-called secret society as an adversary, and tensions have persisted. In 1938, the Church further reinforced its opposition, stating that Freemasons could not be members of the Church. While the Freemasons began as a guild of builders, they evolved into something greater. In 1828, the Anti-Masonic Party emerged as the first political third party in the United States. Concerns were raised about the group's perceived power and increasing secrecy, fueling conspiracy theories. Even today, conspiracy theories involving the Freemasons persist, such as claims of extraterrestrial contact and advanced knowledge. Throughout history, notable figures like George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, Henry Ford, Winston Churchill and Franklin D. Roosevelt have been associated with Freemasonry. However, it is important to separate fact from fiction and recognize that the Freemasons are primarily a fraternal organization rooted in craftsmanship and fellowship. Number 7. Marco Polo and Chinese Dragons Marco Polo was one of the most remarkable explorers of ancient times. He embarked on an extraordinary journey during the Middle Ages, traveling through vast land to reach China where he found himself under the patronage of Kublai Khan. After nearly two decades of incredible adventures, Marco Polo returned to Europe, eager to share his captivating tales. Among the stories he recorded were accounts of families raising dragons in China, but historians have largely disregarded these tales. In 1271 AD, Marco Polo commenced his famous expedition, crossing Persia and eventually arriving in Asia to meet with the mighty Kublai Khan. Kublai Khan, the inheritor of the Mongol kingdom from his grandfather Genghis Khan, welcomed Marco Polo into his kingdom. After 17 eventful years on Khan's soil, Marco Polo embarked on the epic journey back to Europe, armed with his astonishing stories. These tales were compiled and published in the year 1300 AD as The Travels of Marco Polo. While the book primarily focused on the intriguing customs and exotic habits of the East, Marco Polo also detailed the incredible creatures he encountered. In Chapter 49, Marco Polo vividly describes his visit to a place called Karajan. During his time there, he witnessed colossal serpents measuring about 30 feet in length and 8 feet in girth. These creatures possessed short legs adorned with massive claws resembling those of a large cat. Their eyes were enormous and fierce, and their jaws wide enough to devour a person whole. Marco Polo asserted that these creatures were so ferocious that no other animal dared to approach them. Some of these serpents were smaller, around eight feet long, and inhabited caves where they devoured everything from wolves to tigers. Marco Polo's account of encountering living dragons is intriguing because it diverges from fictional tales. His book was a retelling of his grand adventures but also served as a scientific catalog of the events and beauty he encountered in Asia. It seems unlikely that Marco Polo would fabricate stories about encountering such magnificent beasts. So if these dragon-like creatures truly existed, it is likely that they were hunted mercilessly by the people of Karajan, leading to their eventual extinction. Number 6. The Nine Unknown Men Next up is the wise and powerful ruler named Emperor Ashoka. He governed the Marian Empire in 270 BC, and he possessed a remarkable secret. This secret was so astounding that Emperor Ashoka knew it must be protected from the common people. He formed a clandestine society known as the Nine Unknown Men to safeguard this knowledge through time. Emperor Ashoka carefully selected his nine most capable advisors and entrusted them with the task of preserving the secret. They were tasked with passing on their knowledge to approved successors before their own deaths. This ensured that the society would forever consist of nine members who alone possess the emperor's original secret. Many people are curious about the nature of this secret, but it remains a mystery to this day. No one knows what Emperor Ashoka discovered that was so perilous to society. What we do know 
is that Emperor Ashoka, after experiencing the horrors of the Kinga War and witnessing the deaths of hundreds of thousands, became deeply committed to pursuing wisdom and peace. The nine unknown men were not only tasked with guarding the Emperor's secret, they were also entrusted with preserving the world's knowledge. Emperor Ashoka wanted these men to safeguard all the understanding humanity had acquired about the cosmos, biology, alchemy, and more. While it is said that the secret society still exists, there is no concrete evidence of its continued activity. Researchers Jack Berrier and Lou Powes claimed back in the 1960s that the nine unknown men were real and active. However, their assertions lack substantiation. There is also a rumor that Pope Sylvester II met with the nine unknown men during his visit to India before he died in 103 AD. Pope Sylvester was astonished by what he learned from the society, but unfortunately, he passed away shortly thereafter. In India, legends persist of mystical books penned by the nine unknown men throughout the ages. These books are said to contain the secrets of space travel, communication with extraterrestrial beings, and the manipulation of gravity. Whether these rumors hold any truth, we cannot be certain. The tale of the nine unknown men remains shrouded in mystery, leaving us to wonder about the incredible knowledge they safeguard and the potential impact it could have on our world. Number 5. The Illuminati In the late 18th century, a group of five men from Bavaria, Germany, gathered in a secluded forest for what would become the first official meeting of a secretive organization. It was May 1, 1776. These men were inspired by the ideas of the Enlightenment, a time when education and science were valued over superstition and religion. They aimed to influence global politics and challenge institutions they considered harmful to society, the monarchy and the church. The group initially called themselves the Perfectibilists, but later became known as the Illuminati. They chose the Owl of Minerva, the Roman goddess of wisdom, as their symbol. To expand their ranks, they sought contact with the Freemasons, another famous secret society. Contrary to popular belief, these secret societies were not supportive of the establishment. They sought to dismantle the grip of the monarchy and the church on European society. Membership in the Illuminati was exclusive. Prospective members had to possess substantial wealth and influence. By 1782, the group had reportedly grown to 600 members, including wealthy German nobles and many Freemasons. Two years later, the membership increased to around 3,000, attracting doctors, lawyers, and intellectuals. In 1784, the Duke of Bavaria outlawed secret societies, and the Illuminati was supposedly disbanded. However, whether they truly disappeared remains a mystery. Some speculate that the Illuminati continues to exist in the shadows, exerting control and pursuing world domination. Yet, despite numerous theories, concrete evidence of their continued existence has eluded discovery. What do you think about secret societies? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Number 4. The Pineal Gland The pineal gland, shaped like a pine cone, holds some intriguing secrets. To understand its significance, let's start with its basic function. Scientists tell us that the pineal gland regulates melatonin, a hormone that helps us sleep and maintain our sleep-wake cycles. It's an essential part of the brain found in most vertebrates, including humans. This gland also plays a role in regulating blood pressure and insulin sensitivity. Now let's journey back in time to the 17th century when French philosopher René Descartes proposed a groundbreaking theory called the Descartes theory. He believed that the pineal gland housed the human soul. At that time, people saw the mind and body as separate entities, with the soul existing beyond the physical shell. Descartes' theory brought a scientific connection between the soul and the body. But what about the mysterious pine cone symbolism? The pineal gland has often been referred to as the biological third eye because it senses light and influences our perception of it. It controls our sleeping patterns based on light exposure. The pineal gland has always been seen as a special symbol throughout history because it looks like a pine cone. People have connected it to spiritual enlightenment and awareness. It's interesting to note that there's a huge brass pine cone statue in the courtyard of the government buildings in Vatican City. You might also notice that the Pope's hat is shaped like a pine cone. But here's the thing. 
These symbols aren't directly related to Christianity. The statue was made by a Roman sculptor named Publius Cincius Salvius around the first century AD, even before Christianity existed. The pine cone was already considered a sacred symbol at that time. When Christianity began to develop, it adopted the pine cone as part of its symbolism. To unravel the pine cone mystery further, we need to go back even earlier, about 5,500 years ago, to the ancient Sumerians, who carved depictions of their gods known as the Anunnaki. Interestingly, these gods are often portrayed holding pine cones near their faces, suggesting a connection to the pineal gland. The Anunnaki's involvement in the pine cone mystery raises questions about their knowledge and potential influence on early human civilization. While we can't say for certain if the Anunnaki were real aliens who imparted knowledge to humanity, they clearly understood the pineal gland and recognized its resemblance to a pine cone. Their knowledge of human anatomy, particularly the pineal gland as the biological third eye, is evident. The secrets of the pineal gland continue to captivate us, offering glimpses into our ancient civilization and the mysteries of human consciousness. Number 3. Asclepius and the Serpent Long ago, there was a symbol that represented medicine. It was a staff with two snakes slithering around it. And at the top, something unusual happened. The snakes grew a pair of wings. This symbol, known as the caduceus, could be seen outside apothecaries in Europe. But here's a surprising fact. This symbol had nothing to do with medicine. The symbol originated from the ancient Greek god Hermes. He had a staff too, but with only one snake instead of two. Hermes was a mythological figure and the son of Apollo, the Greek god associated with healing and diseases. Now let's delve into the story of Asclepius. As he grew up, he became a renowned healer in Greece. One fateful day, he encountered a snake. But instead of harming it like most people would, Asclepius showed kindness. To his astonishment, the snake slithered up his staff and whispered secret knowledge into his ear. From that moment on, Asclepius possessed extraordinary healing powers. Somewhere along the way, the story of Asclepius and his staff got mixed up with Hermes' staff. The exact details of how this happened are lost to history. Regardless, the symbol for medicine should have been a single staff with one snake, not two snakes with wings. Nevertheless, the myth of Asclepius and his encounter with the snake had a profound impact. Snakes became revered throughout ancient Greece as symbols of healing and wisdom. Interestingly, a similar story can be found in the tale of Eve and the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Perhaps it was just another version of Asclepius' story, where a snake whispered secrets once again. So the next time you see a staff with two snakes and wings, remember that its true origin lies in ancient legends. And while the symbol may not accurately represent medicine, it carries with it the fascinating stories of Asclepius, Hermes, and the snakes who whispered secrets of healing. Number 2. The White Lotus Long ago in Imperial China, there was a secret group called the White Lotus Society. It began as a religious movement that combined Buddhist teachings, Taoism, and indigenous practices. Over time, their beliefs spread across China and gained popularity. In the 12th century, the White Lotus Society became an official religious group, but the government was suspicious of their unconventional ideas. However, when the Mongols invaded and established the Yuan Dynasty in the 13th century, the White Lotus Society gained acceptance and reached a wider audience. The society's teachings changed over time, focusing on a belief that the Buddha would return from heaven to save humanity. People, tired of suffering and corruption, prayed for the Buddha's intervention. The White Lotus Society rebelled against the government, leading to their banishment in 1308. Instead of disappearing, they went underground and played a role in the Red Turban Rebellion, which led to the downfall of the Yuan dynasty. The White Lotus Society continued as a religious and political group until they attempted another rebellion in 1796, which failed. In the 19th century, any society calling themselves White Lotus became illegal, forcing the group to become secret. They eventually transformed into the Triads, a major criminal organization in modern times. Thus, the story of the Triads traces back almost 2,000 years to the Buddhist monks who founded the White Lotus Society. Number 1. The Osirica In an ancient Egyptian village near Deir el-Medina, an exciting discovery was made during archaeological digs. 
researchers uncovered evidence of a remarkable secret society known as the Osirica. These skilled builders may have been the earliest predecessors of the Freemasons. The village, originally called Ta Set Ma'at, meaning the place of truth, was established around the 16th century BC. Within just a century, it became a hub of architectural excellence, producing the finest craftsmen in Egypt. The inhabitants of Ta Set Ma'at dedicated their lives to the study of architecture with great precision. Their mastery of geometry and other Masonic techniques was unparalleled. The builders from Ta Set Ma'at were responsible for constructing the astonishing Valley of the Kings. The town had specialized schools that taught these advanced skills to new generations of builders, much like modern-day technical schools. Controversial scholars like George G. M. James believe that Ta Set Ma'at, or Ma'at, was home to a secret order called the Osirica. This order could predate any other known Masonic group. The theory suggests that their knowledge and skills were protected for thousands of years until they were eventually passed on to the European Masonic order. The origin of the Osirica's knowledge remains a mystery. Did they receive it from cosmic visitors? Did they discover it on their own? Or is the truth even more astonishing than anyone could imagine? While their techniques were eventually imitated by other civilizations, the Osirica may have been the original branch of the Freemasons. If you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Stay tuned for more content and see you in the next one. Goodbye.